So it's deserts. Yeah, that this week, this week you had the second paragraph of the desert reports, the report due. I think the first week you did the Sahara Desert. Yeah, and then you did Roman numeral two, which was the Gobi Desert. Did you finish that one? Uh, yeah. No, we didn't. Okay. Oh, no. Not yet? Okay, that's okay. How far did you get on that? Did you start writing your paragraph yet? Yeah. Well, I only did a little bit. Oh, okay. You just started it? Okay. Okay. That's okay. You can uh, work on that later. And I was just going to check to see how it was coming along with your dress up words. So when you write your paragraph, do you use your checklist to help you remember the words you need to include? Yeah. Good. I have it. Okay, good. Okay. So that was the homework assignment due today, but that's okay. You can finish it later. That is just the finishing paragraph. So your report about deserts is two paragraphs long. The first one was about the Sahara Desert. The second paragraph was about the Gobi Desert. And that's all you had to do was the two paragraphs. So we're going to move on to the next lesson um, because we got to keep moving through the binder. We're trying to get as far as we can by the end of July. So let's start by taking some notes. So you're going to need some lined paper. Okay. Lined paper. Yeah, like that. Let me zoom out a little bit and you'll need your pencil or your pen, whatever you prefer writing with. Got it. Okay, good. And you already know how to label your paper, so go ahead and put your name here. And then the date today is July 3rd, 2023. Mm. Okay. Okay. And then this unit, we have been learning how to summarize a reference. So remember we talked about the word summarize and how basically what you're doing when you're summarizing something is taking you're looking at a lot of information and you're only using some of the information in your report, like you did for the desert report. So we're gonna keep talking about that, but I want you to go ahead and write, um, this is kind of a, well, right in the middle, let's put unit four, because that's the unit we're in right now. And then underneath that, I want you to write summarizing, a reference and this is the name of the unit that we're working on. Can you see that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Underneath that, I'm gonna have you put writing a report because that's the other, other words I'm using for this part of the unit. Because you're, um, let's see, Lizbeth, what grade will you be in this coming school year? Fourth. Fourth grade. Okay, good. So fourth grade, um, I think that's the year if you follow any of the state curriculum and state standards and stuff, you will learn about uh, the missions in California, I think for part of your history lesson. And you might write a report about that. Um, other things you might learn about, about California is like the history and things like that. Sometimes you might have a report. So this is gonna help you. In my class, I'm gonna teach you how to write a report for me, but then later if your mom gives you another assignment and wants you to write a report about something different, you can do it this way, okay, this is, these are the steps in how to write a report. 
So go ahead and skip a line. And then I want you to just write number one here. And I'm going to have you take some notes. The first one you're going to do is what is the subject? I'm going to answer that question. What is the subject? So it could be anything. It could be about, about volcanoes. It could be about Mars, it could be about missions, like I said earlier about California, or um, could be an essay report about dinosaurs or um, about horses. Horses, there you go. See, there's it could the subject could be anything, it just depends on what your teacher wants you to write about. So, knowing what the subject is is the first step in writing a report. Mm -hmm. And usually that comes from a teacher. So usually the teacher will tell you what that is. And then the second step, number two, is gonna be what are the topics? And the topics are the things about the subject. So if you think about the subject as the main thing, like volcanoes, and then your topics are things about the volcanoes, like the lava and the ash and how it affects the community and how it affects animals and things like that, or where the volcanoes are located in the world. All of those would be considered topics. And that, that tells you how many paragraphs. So I want you to put a little line like that, and then you're going to put paragraphs because the topics are your paragraphs about the subject. And then number three is, the next step is find interesting facts about each topic, find interesting facts about each topic. So you have your big subject, your topics are your paragraphs. And in order to write those paragraphs, you have to find facts or details about those topics to help you write it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Find interesting facts about each topic. And that's what we talked about that a couple of weeks ago. When you're reading something, you look for things that are interesting to write about. Because if you think they're interesting, then the person reading your paper will probably think it's interesting too. But if you think it's boring, then the people reading it might think it's boring. So it's important when you're looking for information or you're looking for facts that you pay attention, especially to the ones that you think are interesting. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. Number four is make a K. W O. Do you remember what K W O stands for? You are um, out line. Outline. Outline. <laughs> there you go. Keyword outline. Good. Go ahead and write that down. And that's just what we've been working on since the beginning of class. When we write down the three keywords, or you have numbers and symbols and abbreviations for free, that's your keyword outline. So you make that next. And then number five is write paragraphs using K W O.
Okay. And the last one, number six, is use checklist. And that's use checklist. And that, you know, you that's where you make sure to include your dress up words and your title and things like that. So your checklist is really important to use to, mm -hmm. to complete your report. So you have step one, what is your subject? What is the subject you're going to write about? The big topic, or, I mean, the big thing that you're going to write about. And then number two, what are the topics? Like what about that subject? And then interesting facts to make each paragraph. That's what you, how you make your paragraphs. You uh, make a keyword outline with those facts and then write your paragraph and then use your checklist. Now, I want you to skip two lines and I want you to write this examples of subjects and topics. Examples of subjects and topics. Okay. Now skip two lines again, mm -hmm. and I want you to write the word subject, and then skip one line and write the word topics. And we're going to make a little chart together. Okay. Okay. So right under the word subject on, you're going to trace that blue line all the way over to the edge where you see the red line. You can stop there at the red line. And then you're going to, right next to the word subject, you're going to draw a line down. Not all the way to the bottom of your page, but you know, about that far. My line's crooked and it's okay if it's crooked. It doesn't really matter if it's straight or not. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to talk about a couple of ideas here. Mm -hmm. Like, let's put ocean life. Since you just went to the beach, and then here's, I'm going to have you draw a line next to that one like that. Okay. Ocean life. And then next to that, I want you to, well, let's wait on that one. Let's just put ocean life so far. So you have this column right here. Let's pretend for a second that your subject is ocean life. Now, instead of talking about the beach, though, we're going to think about what's actually in the water. So what are some things that you know about what's living in the ocean? What are some things you know about that? Um, whales. Whales. Good. So underneath that, let's put whales. What else lives in the water? Um, dolphins. Good. And what's another name? Oh, seals. Yes. You said one earlier, a crab, so we could put crabs. They live in the water, even though they're they're on the rocks and stuff, they do live inside the water too. Mm -hmm. And what about sharks? Oh yeah, sharks, I was thinking of that. <laughs> so, and there's lots more, that's not all of them. Can you think of one last one we can put down? Um. A killer whale? Yes. Also known as an or orca. Yes, very good. Wow, you know your ocean life. That's pretty good. 
So your subject, if your teacher told you, okay, Lizbeth, you need to write about, write a report about ocean life. That would be your subject. Now you would think of the different topics or look them up to help you, but you would write down all the things that you know mm -hmm. about ocean life. And these would be your topics. Now, remember what are the topics? Those are going to be your paragraphs. So you could do, if you're writing a report about ocean life, one paragraph could be about whales. Mm -hmm. Another paragraph, the second paragraph could be about dolphins. And then the third paragraph could be, let's say, sharks. So that mm -hmm. would be a three paragraph report about ocean life. Okay. So let's try that over here for desert life now okay. think about all the things that live in the desert um, there's, uh, life. Mm -hmm. life um snakes yes very true snakes very scary snakes very scary snakes. I agree with that. In fact, we're going to learn about snakes today and I don't like snakes at all, but um, they are interesting, but we're going to learn about them today. So that's a good one. What else lives in the desert? Um, oh, gerbils? The gerbils? That jump? I think those live in the desert. Do they live in the desert? Let me see. Gerbils? Oh, do. you're talking about like jackrabbits, maybe? Yeah, like the ones that jump. That are like a kangaroo and a mouse. Mm-hmm. Those are Oh. Kind of like a mouse? Mm-hmm. But not a rabbit. No. Um. Looking up where do gerbils live? live. Mm -hmm. Africa, India, and Asia. They keep themselves busy by digging. Also, I'm in the Interesting. What other ones? Yeah, let's keep thinking. Because that, that's kind of I it could be kind of deserty. Yeah. Oh, a hair? A hair. Yeah. I think? It does look like gerbils live in the desert, though. Let's go ahead and put gerbils on here. Let's just for yeah. let's put gerbils, and then hare, H A R E. That's like a rabbit, huh? Mm -hmm. I I know that. Um, remember the camel? We've learned about camels before, right? Yeah, they they live in the in the desert. They live in the desert camels do and then even like a desert tortoise that's oh, a weird, yeah. yeah tor o i s e that's how you spell tortoise it's kind of a weird word yeah like a turtle but it lives in the desert mhm mm i think i know other animals like a lizard i think a yes lizard. yes that's a good one all right, so that's a pretty good list. So and again, did I spell lizard right? I think it needs another Z. L-I-Z-A-R-D. Did I spell it right? No, it has one Z. I spelled it right. Sometimes I write it and it looks wrong. <laughs> but I don't know why I was thinking two Zs, but never mind. It's I I have that correct. So okay. If your teacher says, okay, Lizbeth, write a, a report about the desert life, that would be your subject. See how it's aligned here with subject. Here are your possible topics. So you could pick from there three things for different, three different paragraphs, and then you would find information about each one of those things. So you'd find information about snakes, find information like about gerbils, so you get the idea. That's how you write a report. Okay, now we're going to do 
the next lesson in your binder. So you need your binder out and you're gonna get out some new pages. This is gonna be week 10 that you're gonna get out. So go to the source text tab right here, the first tab, and you're gonna get out pages 81. Starts on page 81, looks like this. Let me zoom out so you can see. It's called Desert Reptiles. Good, so you need 81, and then you need this one, the Sahara Sand Viper. Remember I told you we're writing about snakes, so. <laughs> I know. And then page 85, that one's another uh, article about the Mojave Rattlesnake. You need that one. Mm -hmm. And then there's a third one, the Gray's Monitor. That's on page 87. You need that. Got it. And the checklist, that's page 89. Got it. Oh, good. So that's five pages. So go ahead and take out all five of those pages from your binder. Don't forget to close the rings when you got those out. That's okay. Good. Uh oh, I dropped my paper. Hold on a second. <laughs> okay. Um, that's week 10. All right. So now we do need to do one more thing on the lined paper. So go ahead and get out another clean piece of lined paper before we get started in the report. So you probably guessed it already. We're going to do a report on desert reptiles. And reptiles are animals like snakes and lizards. lizards. Yes. And so, yeah. Except for we don't have dinosaurs anymore, right? They're all extinct now. But yes, lizards, basically lizards and snakes. And they're going to be the desert kind. So we're going to talk about that. Now, um, Go ahead and put your name again on a new piece of paper and the date today. Again, July 3rd, 2023. So our report is gonna be about desert reptiles. So go ahead and skip a line and that's what we're gonna call this, desert reptiles. And then we can just put KWO, for keyword outline. And we know about those, we do those a lot. So this should be pretty easy to go through this. Okay. Okay. So this is another report. You already did a report about deserts. Remember the Sahara Desert and the Gobi Desert, you did that report. Now you're going to write a report about desert reptiles. It's going to be a lot like how we did it last week. So we're going to look at the articles. The articles are going to have a lot of information, but you only need to pick six important things about each article. So let's set up your outline first. Go ahead and skip a line and put Roman numeral one. You're good at this, Lizbeth. So you're gonna do one to six under that. And then that word clincher. So you have Roman numeral one and then one to six and then clincher. Okay. Okay. Next to that Roman numeral one right here in the margin on the edge of your paper, I just want you to put that word topic because that's where your topic is going to go. That's the first part, that number Roman numeral. And then the clincher is at the end. And then you're going to skip a line and do the same thing for Roman numeral two, one to six. and clincher, and you can go ahead and put the word topic here too. I had to squeeze it because that's where the hole is for my paper. So try to fit that in there. 
You're doing, you're doing great. And then one more, you're going to do Roman numeral three. I know it's long. Hopefully it fits on your paper here. Four, five, and then clincher and topic up here like that. Okay. Okay, good. Excellent. So this is going to be a longer report because the one about the desert was only two topics. This one, we're going to have three. So we're not going to get it all done in one week. We're going to take two weeks to finish this. Okay. Um, but we're going to write about different desert reptiles. Now, if you were doing your own research, you would have to go to the library and find some books and look on the internet. But the way this research, this report is done. They already gave you all this information that you need in those three articles that you just took out of your binder. So we're just going to start with the first one today. Mm -hmm. And the first one is this one on page 83. It's called the Sahara Sand Viper. So you need that one for now. Mm -hmm. So this will be your first topic. Okay, because we already have the subject. The subject is desert reptiles. The very first topic is the Sahara sand viper. That's one of the desert reptiles that you're going to learn about. Now, just looking at this, it looks like there's a lot of information, maybe like 10 or 11 facts in here, but you only need six. And so we're going to have to narrow it down and decide which details you want to put in your report. So I'll help you make that decision, okay? Okay. So I'm going to read it to you. And while I'm reading, if you hear anything that you didn't know or that you think is interesting, just use your pencil and underline that part on your paper, okay? And then we'll go back and talk about it. It's you don't have to worry about it. Just if you're listening to me read and you go, wow, okay, that's interesting. Just use your pencil and underline that part and then we'll go back and talk about it. Okay. Okay. The Sahara sand viper. Okay. Sahara sand vipers live in the Sahara desert and parts of the Middle East. They can be as long as 1.6 feet or 50 centimeters. Most are pale sand colored snakes with dark markings and wide triangle shaped heads. Cleverly, these vipers bury themselves under the hot desert sand. They do this to cool off, but this is also how they hunt. Wiggling above the sand, a bit of the snake's tail makes passing lizards and rodents think that it is food. Then, when the unlucky prey is close, it strikes. The Sahara sand viper is vicious and will bite several times. Unfor or, no, fortunately for humans, the viper's venom does not usually kill people, but it dooms any lizards, rodents, and birds that are bitten. The Sahara sand viper is interesting for two other reasons. It is a sidewinder. That mean, or this means that in order to move quickly, the viper jumps over the sand instead of slithering. So it leaves J-shaped tracks in the desert. The sand viper does not lay eggs. It bears live young, which is not a common thing for a snake to do. Hmm. So, and that was it. There's nothing on the back. So that's the article. Did you hear anything new while I was reading that? Hmm. 
No. Not really? Okay. Did you hear anything that you thought was interesting? Mm. Yeah, like the viper jumps. I saw that too. That's interesting to me too. Because, you know, I always think of a snake as slithering, which means mm -hmm. like, you know, yeah, back and forth. But it sounds like it, you know, it actually jumps off of the sand and then lands on the sand. Yeah, maybe like that. <laughs> But it makes a, a, do you remember what shape it makes when it does that in the sand? Mm. It says it makes a certain shape right here. So it leaves a right here. A J shape. A J shape. So it must have like a little curve at the bottom. Oh, so its tail is on the bottom and it jumps. Maybe it pushes off from the tail and as it's pushing it it almost looks like a j shape in the sand maybe yeah That's interesting yeah um i did not know this about them at the very end do you know what it means when it said it bears live young do you understand what that means no that means it gives birth to babies kind of like a dog gives birth to puppies right and a cat will give birth to kittens. Usually, oh, like, a like a mammal. I was just going to tell you that. So usually only mammals, they're the warm-blooded animals, right? They give birth to babies, but usually snakes and reptiles, they okay. lay, uh-huh, they're cold-blooded and then they lay eggs, right? And then the eggs will hatch eventually and little ba baby snakes will come out. But that's very unusual. It's probably the only snake like that. So when it says it bears live young, that means it actually gives birth to baby snakes, not eggs, the actual snakes. So that's, that's crazy. <laughs> I see your emoji there. Yeah, it's crazy. I've never heard of that for a snake. So this this one is that way though, the Sahara Sand Viper. Okay, let's look back on, let's start working on your outline now. So let's have this with in front of you, but keep your article about the Sahara Sand Viper close by because we're gonna need that. So your topic, like I said, is the Sahara Sand Viper. So go ahead for Roman numeral one, we're going to write that in Sahara Sand Viper. That's the name of that article we just read. Okay. And I know that's already three words. Usually our rule is we can only have three words, but mm -hmm. since this is the name of the Viper, I'm going to let it be okay that we use one more word. I'm going to put a comma here. We're going to put just one more word that we can kind of sum up about the Sahara Sand Viper, like maybe they're unusual, um, unique, something like that. What kind of word can you think of? Or if you can use one of those words, if you like one of those words about the Sahara Sand Viper. What can we say? Uh -huh. Uncommon. Uncommon. Nice word. Uncommon. Good. So when you go to write that first sentence of your paragraph, you can use that word uncommon to describe the Sahara sand viper. Good. I like it. Okay. Um, now, this is where we're going to look at these interesting facts about the Sahara Sand Viper. I know that you liked, and they don't have to be in a certain order, by the way. They can be in different orders. So the first thing you mentioned was how it jumps. So this part down here, you said that um, in order to move quickly, the Viper jumps over the sand instead of slithering. So it leaves J-shaped tracks in the desert. Well, let's talk about how it moves, how it jumps. 
And then we'll we'll talk about the J-shaped tracks in a minute. But what are some key words from that fact that we can put in our outline? Hmm. So I'm looking at this sentence here that says, um, this means that in order to move quickly, the viper jumps over the sand instead of slithering. How can we add that to our outline in three words? Um. I think quickly. Okay. Let's yeah, let's talk about it before you write it. But okay, quickly, what else? Viper. Viper, okay. And jumps. I think jumps, yeah. I don't know if we need viper because we're we already know we're writing about the viper. Mm -hmm. So maybe quickly jumps. Sand. Sand. It's interesting though that instead of slithering, what if we did jumps instead slithering? Instead of, let's see, how could we do that? Jumps instead of slithering. What if we just did that? What if we did jumps instead of slithering? I know that's four, technically four words, but every once in a while it's okay to do that. So would you like that idea, Lizbeth? Mm, yeah, I guess. You guess so? <laughs> okay. We could put jumps instead of, and then slithering the next one I thought you mentioned it too I, I like that it leaves j-shaped tracks in the desert so how can we put that fact down j-shaped tracks in the desert mm -hmm. Leaves. Okay. J shaped. Okay. Tracks. I like that. Let's do that. Mm -hmm. That's going to be for regular number two. So leaves. J shaped. And tracks. I like that. Leaves J shaped tracks. Leaves. Oops, I put a P. <laughs> okay. While you're writing that, I'm just going to say that if you're watching this video, if you weren't able to be here today, um, you can write what you want to put for your interesting facts. It doesn't have to be exactly like Lizbeth and mine. You can choose whatever fact you think is interesting. So this is just an example. Um, okay, back to Lizbeth. So look back on the article that we read. What is another interesting fact that you, you can just kind of look at it and Pick something else that you want to put in your report about the Sahara Sand Viper. Um, I think 
um, N, I mean, not, oh, no, eggs, I think. Oh, about mm -hmm. the end? Mm -hmm. This part about how it does not lay eggs? Yeah. Okay. I think lay and eggs. And yeah, I don't, I don't know. Okay, so I if I just put... <laughs> If I just put lay and eggs, that would make me think that they do lay eggs. So we got to tell how they don't lay eggs. Not. Okay. We could do that. Not lay eggs. Not lay eggs. Now, remember, when you go to write your report, these are just your notes. You don't have to use these words. So if you want to use word like maybe they don't lay eggs instead of not lay eggs, that's okay. You can say it that way in your report. This is just to remind you, oh, they they do not lay eggs. Um, so what how do they how what happens if they don't lay eggs? What do they do? We probably should put there's, that next. I think there's, there's young. Live young, yeah. So, but you can put that in your own words if you want to say the word babies. Um, you could say has live babies, if that's easier for you to remember. You want to put that? Yeah. Has live babies two more things after you finish writing that let's see if we can come up with two more interesting facts that you think is interesting about the sahara sand viper to include in your report hmm Uh, how long they are. Okay. Yeah, I think that's interesting too. And how long are they? 1.6 feet and 50 cm. Yeah. Okay. So let's look at that for a second. And you're right. CM stands for centimeters. But in other countries, that's how they measure things. But in the United States, we measure with feet mostly. So you don't have to include that. You can just say um, um, something about 1.6 feet, like measure, or let's see, how could you say that? Um, vipers. Or we could put, okay, I have an idea. <laughs> I have an idea. Circle S for Sierra and S for sand. And SSV. V, yeah, SSV for Sahara Sand Viper. Mm -hmm. and we can use that as a symbol here. We could do SSV. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we can put the length 1.6 feet long. Yeah. 1.6 feet and then long. So SSV 1.6 feet long. That'll work. Mm hmm. Okay, and one more, that's right. So see what else you think is interesting in there.
I don't know. Okay. Well, there's a couple of choices in here. Um, the color, it's like a pale sand color with dark markings. Um, another interesting thing could be that it it buries itself to stay cool. Right here, this part. Yeah. I think that one. That it buries themselves? Mm -hmm. Okay. In the sand, under the hot desert sand to cool off. But they also hunt that way too. So how can we put that into our outline? Um... Berry? Yeah. Um, hold off? Yeah, let's put berry. I think that's good. Berry. What if we did like a down arrow, like under? Mm -hmm. And then like a down arrow like that and then put sand. Sand? Uh-huh. So like they bury themselves under the sand and you said cool. They do that to stay cool. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So you when you go to write that sentence, you could say, um, so they stay cool or to cool off or something like that. Now there's a lot of other um facts in here. There's a lot of details we didn't use like talking about the venom and what kind of um, prey, what they eat, lizards, rodents, and birds. So there's a lot of details we didn't put in our outline and that's okay. That's part of summarizing something. So remember summarizing means you're taking some of the information. You're not taking all of the information. You're just picking some of the information to do your report on. So I think this is a really good outline right here. So your homework this week, well, you got to finish up your paragraph from the Gobi Desert still. So you got to finish that paragraph. And now you're all set to write your new paragraph for desert reptiles. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's look really quick at the checklist. Checklist? Yeah. Just to make sure that you remember everything. This is for this new report now. So this one's a little bit different than the one you're working on from last week. This one, uh, your dress ups are still the same though, but notice you have three paragraphs here, but you're only gonna work on the first paragraph this week, okay? This is page 89, do you have that one? Page 89? Okay, good. So you're only going to do paragraph one, but you got to make sure to include all of these dress up words. So you need an L-Y adverb. You need a who, which clause. You need a strong verb and a because, because clause. clause. Yeah. So make sure you have one of each of those in your paragraph and then make sure right here you don't use any of the band words. Remember, say, said, see, saw, think, thought, and go, went. You don't want to use any of those. You'll have to come up with different words for that. Yeah. Don't, don't worry about your title yet because you you won't do your title until the very end mm -hmm. like next week. So, um, but you do need to make sure to have your topic clincher. Okay. Yeah, I remember the topic clincher. Remember what that is? About the topic? So remember this when we did this together? Mm -hmm. So copy me. I'll say it and then you say it after me, okay? So say mm -hmm. the topic sentence. The topic sentence. And the clincher sentence. And the clincher sentence. Must. Must. Repeat or reflect. Repeat or reflect. Two or three. Two or three. Key. Key. Words. Words. Okay, and that's what it says right here. Topic clincher sentences repeat or reflect 
two to three key words. So the sentence is at the first sentence of the paragraph and the last sentence of the paragraph. You have to have some words that match. Either they're repeating or they're reflecting, meaning different words, but almost the same words. Mm -hmm. Okay. So work on that. And let's see. Oh, it's time to go. So let me stop recording for a second here.